everyone and welcome to the Coos Art Museum's Pumpkin Patch Painting Class. Before we jump into all the painting fun, I want to go over some of the tools and supplies that you'll need to complete this piece. If you were able to stop by the Coos Art Museum this week and pick up your free kit, you'll have all the supplies you'll need right in here. First we have a canvas, the one that we gave out was an 8x10, and then you have this bag of goodies, so let's see what's inside. Inside the kit, you'll find eight different colored paint pots. We have black, green, white, orange, blue, yellow, red, and brown. You also have a standard paintbrush, a pencil for sketching, a little instruction form that gives you some tips and tricks, and a piece of paper for sketching. Before we can paint pumpkins, we have to draw pumpkins. So let's practice drawing pumpkins, and then we'll paint pumpkins. So get your paper, your pencil, and let's get going. If at any point during this class I get going too fast or you don't understand something, feel free to pause the video or even rewind it. That's perfectly fine. So drawing pumpkins is actually really easy and we're going to use a basic shape of an oval. Now, the great thing about pumpkins is they come in so many different shapes. They can be tall and skinny or short and fat or round and blobby. They don't even have to be perfect circles. Actually, the more lumpy and bumpy your oval is, I feel the better your pumpkin comes out. Sometimes I find if I'm having a hard time getting a shape I like, I get really messy. It doesn't have to be neat or perfect or tidy. You can get super messy with this part. So get the shape that you like for the first part of your pumpkin. So for this one, I'm kind of going with an egg shape. Now once I have this part down, I'm going to do an art term called overlapping, which means I'm going to create a, a similar shape, but instead of drawing it completely, it's overlapped by the front shape, meaning it's kind of covered up. So you're going to only see a part of it. I'm going to create one on one side and then create another one on the other side. And this is going to give our pumpkin, it's kind of that pumpkin shape. So here's a couple of pro tips for drawing pumpkins. Towards the bottom of the pumpkin, it gets a little bit wider because of the weight of the pumpkin. And as it gets higher up, it gets a little bit more skinny sometimes. But pumpkins just do what pumpkins want to do. The next thing we're going to do is to draw the stem. And the stem is my one of my favorite parts to draw on a pumpkin because you can have it be any shape you want. So it's going to come out from the top of the pumpkin and then curl up into the vine. And that's what would have given the pumpkin its nutrition from the plant and they cut it off from that part. So your pumpkin stem could be short, it can be tall, it can be curly, it's stumpy, however you want it to look. Now to give our pumpkin a little bit more dimension, I'm going to put two more shapes that are overlapped, but they're in the back of the pumpkin, so really you're just going to see the very tippy tip part of the ovally egg shape. And there we go, we have our finished pumpkin. Now when I teach drawing classes at the Coos Art Museum, the number one rule I have is to practice, practice, practice. The more you practice at something, the better you're going to get. So if this is the first pumpkin that you've ever drawn, draw a whole bunch of pumpkins. The more you practice on this piece of paper, the more confident you're going to feel when you actually draw and paint on your canvas. So I drew a whole bunch of pumpkins. I drew short ones and tall ones and squishy ones. Some that looked really good and some yeah, not so good. And then the more you practice, the more you're going to discover what size and shape of pumpkin you like the very best. If you need some more ideas on pumpkin shape designs, great place to look is reference photos or head out to your local pumpkin patch. I want to practice drawing some pumpkins together. So instead of drawing just three pumpkins side by side, I'm going to do that overlapping thing again where I put one pumpkin in the center, kind of out front, and then I'll overlap some pumpkins behind it. I might even put a little tiny cute baby pumpkin. This is the part where we're kind of planning out what we want our picture to look like. It's a good idea to have a thought or a plan before we jump into the painting process. I'm going to be using two pumpkins in my painting, but you can have three, four, five, ten pumpkins. You could stack them in a tower or just have a single pumpkin. So go ahead and pause this video, sketch out the pumpkin designs that you want, and when you're ready, let's move on to our painting canvas. While you're getting ready, I want to go over a couple of setup tips. First, give yourself an area to work. Now, acrylic paint can be a little bit messy, so you want to lay down a messy mat or some newspaper so that it covers your surface. But also, you want to make sure that this paint doesn't get on your clothes. It will wash off of your hands fine, but sometimes it likes to stick to clothes. So I have special clothes called my painting clothes, which are 
clothes I've used when I painted before. I know they paint on them, so I use them when I paint. Um, but you can also use an apron or a painter's smock. Um, but you just want to be careful with those with fabrics. The only other two items that you're going to need that were not included in this kit, you'll need a painter's cloth. That can either be a napkin or a paper towel, or if you have a rag to clean your brushes with, it's gonna get paint on it, so make sure it's something that you don't care if it gets messy or that you can throw away at the end. And you'll need some clean water to rinse your brushes out with. All right, now that we are ready, let's go ahead and start the painting process. I'm gonna take my canvas, and the first thing you wanna decide is do you want your canvas to be long ways or tall ways? And that'll kind of work into your design process. I'm gonna have mine be a landscape, which is means it's wider than it is more tall. Next, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to very lightly begin to sketch out my pumpkins. I wanna draw them out. Now the paint's gonna cover up um, my pencil marks, but it just helps me if I sketch it lightly, if I need to erase something or move a line around, then it's easier to do that if I don't push really hard. Plus, if you push really hard on a stretch canvas with your pencil, you run the risk of poking the canvas and putting a hole in it. So be gentle, gentle. I want a nice really big pumpkin and then I'm going to put a little tiny pumpkin next to it. Again, you can choose however many pumpkins you want um, and then sketch that in. This also does not have to be super perfect looking. You'll see that some of my lines, I didn't like how they looked, so I just drew over them and created a better line. So don't let uh, the, the thought that your pumpkins have to be perfect, there's no perfect pumpkin patch out there, um, get you frustrated. So just take your time. If you need to, pause this video, sketch that out, and then when you're ready, we get to start adding paint to our painting. So let's go. Now, bonus tip. I often think of art as in levels, like when you're beginning learning to draw or paint, you're at like level one. And then after you get comfortable with that, you level up and maybe you can do some more fun things or add in some extra details. So I'm gonna be talking to everybody at all different levels. I'm gonna start it off really basic, but for those artists who maybe want to have a little bit more challenge, I wanna give you some level ups, tips and tricks. So. For me, I wanna add a few extra details. I'm gonna add in some pumpkin leaves, which I probably should have researched what a pumpkin leaf looked like. I just drew a generic leaf. So you can be extra scientific and look at some pictures of pumpkin leaves and draw those the way they're supposed to look, or you can be just like me and, and just imagine what a, your pumpkin leaf would look like. But I'm gonna add some leaves and then I thought some fun acorns, cause those are, are fun to see during the fall time. I'm also gonna put in some vines and leaves towards the top of the stem, so I'm gonna make some curly little action lines over there. A lot of this is gonna get covered up with my paint and I'll have to just remember that I drew it there. <laughs> but you can, if you draw it on your piece of paper, your planned out paper, and that can help a lot, so. <laughs> but if drawing a pumpkin is the max that you want to do, that's perfectly fine as well. We have now officially entered phase two. We've designed and sketched our pumpkins out and now we are getting ready to put paint on. So don't rush this phase. If you're not ready to jump into the painting part yet, just don't, this video will be here forever, so you just take your time. I'm gonna get out the colors that I need right now. I have them in little trays. You can just open up the, you know, the little cups that you have, and I'm gonna begin to lay in my background colors. So this first part I consider in as blocking in my colors that I want. And we start with the background first and then kind of move forward because it's easier to cover up paint than it is to try to paint over other colors, which we will do a little bit, but it, it just, we work from the back to the front. Now for my background, I want it to be a nice dark blue sky, because the blue is going to contrast really well with the orange in my pumpkins. But I don't want just a solid blue. Now, you can have a solid blue if you want, but I wanna add a gradient. Now gradient is when one color blends into another color. So I'm gonna have, a dark blue blending into a white. So I'm gonna lay in 
my blue first and you're gonna see that I'm gonna cover up all those wonderful sketches I did of the vines and I'm not gonna be able to see them. So again, I have to remember that I put them there, but I'm gonna add my paint in. And you wanna add your paint in not a lot at a time. You want enough where you can control it uh, and enough that it fills in those little white little divots around your canvas, but you don't want it to be running down your canvas or dripping off your, your paintbrush. So you'll see I will put some on my brush and then I will swish it around. I kind of do this little X kind of uh, motion with my paintbrush and go whack, 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 whatever motion you want. And if you need to make sound effects while you're painting, that's perfectly fine. If I had the audio for my painting process on right now, you would hear I make I make art sound effects. I don't know if it helps or not, but I, I enjoy doing it. So whatever helps. Now I want the white gradient to be kind of behind my pumpkin, kind of shining out. Maybe there is a light behind it or something. So I'm putting in my blue and then you'll notice in a little bit, I'll switch over to my white. Now the thing that you're gonna to wanna to remember is to protect your paints because that little paint pot is all the paint you got. And if you take your blue and you dip it straight into your white without rinsing your and cleaning your brush out, you're gonna have light blue from now on and not white. So I washed my brush off really well, or you can take and scoop out a little bit of paint and put it in the lid of the, of the little paint pot and that can be your like separate palette and you can mix your paint in there. But I'm gonna take my white and I'm gonna put it on my canvas and then I'm gonna blend it up into the blue. And I'm gonna woof, 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 make my little sound effects as I brush those paints together. And you'll see that the white then turns into that baby blue and then into that darker blue, which makes my gradient. Again, if you want your sky to be a different color, if you wanna have stars in the back of your sky, if you want a black sky, if you want you know just a straight blue sky, this is your painting, you can do whatever you want. And for our little artists out there, I love to see how creative you guys are. So if you have a green sky or a pink sky or a rainbow colored sky, that's great too. Now, I'm gonna bump this up to the next level and I'm gonna create a three color gradient. Instead of having just white merging into blue, I'm gonna add a black into that to make it super dark, dark blue. So I'm going to put that on the very far edges and then mix my blue into my black. So it's gonna have a tri gradient effect. You'll notice that I am trying to keep a crisp line around my actual pumpkin itself in the stem. I'm trying not to paint over top of that. Yes, my paints will cover up mostly, but sometimes there might be, especially if you have a super dark color in the background, that color may show through and you'll have to add several layers. So to conserve paint, I'm trying to keep keep my paint in the places that I want it to be. Kind of thinking of it as like a coloring page, you're painting in the lines. You don't have to but it sometimes helps a little bit uh, make the process a little bit easier for you. All right, now for another little bit of a level up point. I wanna create a little texture in the background. So instead of just smoothly brushing my paint around, I'm now going to use a little dabble dabble effect where I'm just gonna like push the paintbrush down and it's gonna create this little smudge. And that smudge creates a texture and I like that texture. So that's just what I'm doing. If you wanna do that, you can, you can practice with it, test it out, see if it works for you. If you don't like it, the wonderful thing about painting with acrylics is you can paint over top of it and fix it and do whatever you want. Fun fact, a lot of times when museums get really cool old pieces of art, 
and they're restoring them, they will find that the painter had painted something totally different underneath their original painting. It was like some other painting, and then they didn't like it, and they covered it up, and then they painted the Mona Lisa over top of it. And that's super common. Um, so don't worry if you make a mistake, because even the greats made mistakes, so yay. <laughs> The next part is I'm going to be painting the ground. So I'm gonna be using brown. But I thought I would show you, even though we gave you brown, I wanted to show you how sometimes as artists we can mix our own colors. So in the art world, there are three primary colors, which are blue, yellow, and red. And from those primary colors, you can mix them and create any color that you want. And and so that's, that is a fun thing to play with. In fact, I highly recommend that when you're done completely with your painting and you go to throw your paint pots out, the leftover paint, take a scratch piece of paper and have fun mixing the colors and see what kind of shades and colors you can get. It's really fun. But I'm showing you how I am mixing a brown. So I'm taking a red, a yellow, and a blue and mixing those three together. Now, if you take more red and yellow and a little bit of blue, you'll get a, a, a brighter brown. If you add more blue, then you'll get a duller brown, which will actually, you could maneuver into being a kind of a black. So you'll see, I put a lot of blue into this, so it's kind of a darker brown. And then later on, I'll add a little bit more yellow into that to brighten it up and then have a highlight color. So if you wanna practice mixing colors, you can do that. Um, but we did give you a brown so that you don't have to worry about the whole mixing thing but you know it's fun to mix your own colors of paint so feel free to pause this video and finish your background and your ground ground and then we'll come back to actually start working on the pumpkins now at this point i'm going to give it a few minutes to just kind of set and dry if you have a lot of really goopy paint it might take a few minutes it might take a half an hour you can set it in the sun and it'll dry but it's I would give it a little bit to dry because when you start adding a lighter color and you're brushing over that blue, if you have a really puddle of blue, it's gonna pull that in and it's gonna tint your shades of, of lighter tones. So give it a second to dry and then you can start adding in those orange colors. I'm gonna paint my big pumpkin first. And again, you'll see I'm painting over the beautiful leaves that I drew and I'm gonna have to remember them and repaint them again. I'm going to use my brush strokes to help me. So anytime you take paint and you swipe it across your canvas, you kind of get a texture from your brush and those are called your brush strokes. So I'm going to try to the best of my ability to use my brush strokes in an up and down curved motion that kind of would simulate the, the grain or the texture of an actual pumpkin as it grows. It has those kind of veiny things and it's gonna, it just moves in that direction. So wherever I can use things to help out my painting, I'm gonna do that. So this is level one, putting your pumpkin in all one color, it's a beautiful orange pumpkin. But we're gonna level this up and we're gonna add a little bit of shading. Now when we drew a pumpkin, we drew those shapes, the big ovally shape and then the two oval shapes on the side. Those are kind of those, those ribs or, or bumpy things. I don't know the technical terms, but the textures. So I'm gonna very carefully look at my painting. I can kind of faintly see those, those lines and I'm going to add a little bit of red to my orange and it's gonna darken it in a little bit. Again, you wanna protect your original color so I'm going to use the, the top lid of my paint pot or if you have a, um, a palette, you put your paint in that and mix your paint. Don't mix it in your original one because then you only have that color. But I'm gonna create just a darker touch of my pumpkin color. And I'm going to put that on the back sides of those of those two circles that are overlapped. And you'll see that I'll gradient out the color from those back parts so they kind of floof out, but when they overlap behind that the first big circle, I let it be kind of a, a crisp line. And that's going to draw some attention to that. It's going to push that forward. So here's a fun art thing. If you add light to something, it generally brings it forward. And if you add a shadow or a darker color, it tends to push things back. So I'm gonna use that to help me with my pumpkin to make it look not like it's just a smooth circle, but that it's 
that's a lumpy bumpy bumpkin. With that in mind, I'm going to take some of my yellow and I'm going to add some highlights to that. So I'm going to put that right on the paint. Now my orange paint is still wet, so it's going to blend really nicely with all of my colors. So I'll just dab that yellow paint right on top of that and then use my brush to kind of smooth it out and just kind of get it to, to play with the orange a little bit. I don't want it to just disappear, but just kind of smooth it a little bit. And you'll see how that just kind of pops the front part of the pumpkin out. I'm also going to add a little bit around the edge just to kind of bring a little a little notice to that. It's going to get a little bit of highlight uh, from the, the light that's coming from behind it. And that makes a fun little pumpkin. Again, if you want just a solid orange pumpkin, that's totally cool. And I didn't paint like a face on my pumpkin, but I know a lot of my art students like to do that. They like to carve the little pumpkin so you could jump in with your black and paint in your eyes and your mouth. I know that's always a fun part. You could do that right now if you wanted to. So go ahead, paint your big pumpkin, pause this video, and when you're done with the orange part of your pumpkin, then we will come back in for the next part of our pumpkins. Okay, it's time to paint my second pumpkin. So this is also kind of like a level up or just a little bonus idea that not all pumpkins are orange. Some of them are white, some of them are green, some of them are kind of brownish, some are yellow. So you can change up the colors of your pumpkins. I'm gonna take some of my green and in a separate little dish, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it to make it a very minty, light colored green. And I'm gonna paint my baby pumpkin uh, that color so it kind of has a little contrast. The same thing is going to apply. I'm going to put my base color in and then I'm going to go in with a darker shade to kind of add in those textures around the lights. So have fun with painting all your pumpkins and then we'll come back to work on the stem and some of the leaves and some of the details. So paint on, painters! <music> finally time to paint the stems of our pumpkins. I'm going to take my brown, so I'm going to paint that on there, and then I will go back in and add just a little bit of black to my brown, and that will darken it, and then I can add my shadows and textures. So for this technique, again, use your brush strokes to help you out, um, go with the motion of how the, the vine would grow, and don't forget your little baby pumpkins if you have those. Get those all in there. Now, if you added some bonus details like leaves or acorns, this is the perfect time to paint them as well. Because I'm working with my brown, then I can just add some brown to my acorns. I think I'm gonna have a couple of my leaves be brown. I'm not gonna have all of them brown. I'm gonna change some up and have different colored leaves because that's one of my favorite things about fall is all the fall colors, uh, all the leaves. There's some orange and browns and yellows and reds. They're just, they're just gorgeous. So have fun with lots of different colors. Again, you don't have to have these little bonus things, uh, but if you want to give it a try, go for it. If not, you can just cover these acorns up with gigantic leaves and no one will ever know. <laughs> for the tops of my acorns, I'm going to use my darker brown to kind of give it a little bit of difference. So the, the brown itself is a little bit of a lighter color. The, the acorn itself is a little bit lighter color, and then I added some black to it to darken it, and I'm going to paint the caps of the acorns. In fact, when I was a kid, 
my sister and I used to collect acorns and then we would actually paint them like Easter eggs and tie little strings around them and hang them in the window. It was so much fun. But I haven't done that in a long time. Well, I should do that. That would be fun. While you have your dark brown, you can jump over to your stems and add some of that to kind of give a little bit of textures. Um, just play around with it. Again, if it doesn't look right, just give it a few minutes to set up and dry and you can paint over it and make it however you want. Okay, let's get on to the painting of the leaves. Again, I told you that the leaves can be lots of different colors. You don't have to have a red leaf or a brown leaf or a yellow leaf only. You can have all the leaf colors. So I'm gonna start off with a nice vibrant red leaf and I'm gonna paint my first big leaf in front of my pumpkin that, that color. Now I decided to go ahead and stick with red for a secondary leaf and you're gonna see in a little bit, I am beginning to think, hmm, maybe I don't want all of my leaves to be red. And later on I'll change that. And I left that in the video so that you can see how easy it is to change things if you change your mind on stuff. But I have two red leaves right now and a little orange leaf. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna take that orange and I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights to my leaves. I'm just gonna tap that in there with some little swishes and blend that in. It doesn't blend super great because my leaf was already kind of drying a, a little bit, but um, you can still move that paint around and kind of smush it. You just don't wanna cover everything with your highlights, otherwise your highlights then become your base color. So you wanna, you wanna let your under color show through a little bit and just, just less is more when it comes to highlights, go slow. So while you're all working on this, I want to add some bonus work to my shading and shadowing of my pumpkins. So I'm going to ramp up the shading. I'm gonna add some darker browns and maybe even a little blues to my oranges and greens to just get some really dark, vibrant colors. Now, whoops, I added a little bit too much black to my little green pumpkin. So I'm gonna clean my brush off and then I'm just gonna keep smudging that paint and lifting it and blending that in and actually, that little accident turned into a happy accident and it, I like how it turned out. So if you accidentally put the wrong color of paint or too much paint, don't freak out. Just take a deep breath and keep working with it and uh, you'll never know. It might turn out uh, for the better, like with my little pumpkin. So now at this point, I'm gonna add in the vines and leaves that I drew in and painted over. I'm gonna put those in, uh, so I'm gonna get some greens and paint those in. And a tip for painting really thin lines is to paint on the very tip of your paintbrush. So, so I'm using this really nice greens because greens and yellows and blues and oranges just pop really well. But it's at this point that I have decided that my gigantic red leaf is so close in the same color as my pumpkin that it's just not 
poppin and I decided I want to change that so I'm going to change it to kind of a greenish brown leaf and the reason I say greenish brown leaf is because it hasn't completely dried and as I begin to apply my green paint it's mixing with the red which then as we know when you mix colors we're gonna get brown um, but that's okay because it's, it's it's in the process of changing from a you know healthy living leaf to being a shriveled up brown leaf <laughs> So I'm gonna add those colors in there and then add a little highlights. And I think it turned out better. So it helps you to see that uh, leaf a little bit more. It brings some, um, so your, it brings your eye attention down so that you can see that down there. And really what we have left now is just the fun details. This is going in and looking at all the different parts of our painting and deciding what do I want to change? What do I want to add? What do I want to fix? Um, you never want to rush your paintings. There have been times that I've worked on paintings and have thought, mm, it is done. I am finished. I even signed my name. And then like weeks later, I look at it and I go, something's not right. And I will take it back and I will work on it and fix it. I have pieces I've been working on and doing little things too for years now. Some art never ends so don't give yourself a time like it has to be done done by now so uh, one tip that I will have if you think that there might be something off on your painting set your painting up and then walk to the other side of the room and look at it from farther away changing your perspective of how you look at things can help you help your eye to see areas that you might want to put more attention to Another tip is to hold it up in a mirror and look at it in reverse. Um, that can help you see it in a new perspective as well. I see so many things in my paintings that I want to fix or change when I do that. So that's a little artist tip for you. So when everything is the way you like it, or at least close to the way you like it, we have our finished painting. Give it a good day or two to dry before you decide to hang it up. And another bonus tip is if you have any leftover paint, you can paint the edges, the sides of your canvas to kind of give it a little finished look. I would love to see the paintings that you guys created. So if you want to post your finished paintings on social media, the Coos Art Museum is on Instagram and Facebook and we would love to see your artwork. So make sure to tag us in your social media posts. And we have plans of doing more of these, especially during the holiday season. So if you're not yet, hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming tutorial videos. And make sure to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram. That way you'll be kept up to date on all of our future classes, whether they're online classes or hopefully soon in-house classes. I can't wait. So until we meet again, remember to stay creative.